Patch 6 introduced a new legendary ability for the Shambling Mound. It can be found in the ruined battlefield not too far from Last Light. You go up this ramp and check him out. Shambling Mound is a mini boss who already existed in the Shadow Curse lands but has been buffed up a bit. I did this fight on my solo honor mode monk. Uh, before the fight I did Isabel Last Light Defense and Halson's Portal Defense Encounters, which is why I summoned the Fire Elemental and got him to drink an Elixir of Vigilance. I wouldn't recommend a Fire Elemental specifically for this fight, as a lot of the enemies have fire resistance, but you'll see uh, they did okay. Most of the damage in the fight is piercing or necrotic damage, so get your buff from Isabel, uh, which gives necrotic resistance, or use a necrotic elixir. I threw down some grease uh, to slow down the enemies getting to me, and I sent in my fire elemental to start the fight. I didn't want to get surprised. And they all have perfect sentry, six of the little guys, two of the medium plants to give them plus five initiative. So have a look around, check out the new legendary action. You can see the aura there, that's the range of it around the boss. The new Shambling Mound legendary ability is an aura, which does a large amount of necrotic damage if you end your turn in it. So unlike a lot of ground effects, you can start your turn in it, attack the Shambling Mound and get out of it. It pairs nicely with his Pull and Entangle abilities, and the two Vine Blight creatures that accompany him also have Entangle abilities to immobilize you. The Shadow Blight Needles explode with piercing damage when they die. It can chain reaction, and it's one of the main threats in the fight. Be careful if you're using ground effects or have reactive damage, stuff that triggers not on your turn, because it can cause the explosion when you're not expecting it. Um, for example, I didn't use uh, fire shield in this fight. The Shambling Mound boss has piercing immunity, so he can't be killed by exploding all his little guys, uh, but the other enemies can. He uses his Adhesive Whip, it's a ranged ability that pulls you in. Uh, here he uses it on the Fire Elemental, uh, and the Fire Elemental fails the saving throw, uh, but is immune to prone, so he's pulled in but not knocked down. There's two Shadow Cursed Harpers in the fight as well, they decided to join a little later for some reason. They have constricted the Fire Ellie here, so he's immobile, uh, but fortunately he can teleport. Uh, I've just brought Fire Elemental uh, because I already had him with me. I don't think he's the best choice for this fight, uh, nor is he needed. As I'm trying out a changed fight on auto mode, I am being a bit cautious, and it's nice to have an extra target to uh, split their attention. In an emergency, uh, Misty Step Scrolls, spells, or items are always great when you're immobilized and surrounded lets you get away without uh, triggering attacks of opportunity. Uh, the Boots of Striding from Minthara mean you cannot be moved or knocked prone while concentrating on a spell. Also very good here. In this fight I was wearing the Ring of Free Action. It's probably safest to keep kiting, uh, but as a monk I want to get in there and do some punches. Here I'm targeted with the Adhesive Whip. You can see it has quite a decent range. Um, that's its max range you see here to move to use it. Uh, and I'm pulled in and knocked prone. Uh, that's one of the more dangerous moves you can get hit by. And that pulls you into his new aura uh, that's designed to, to make that a bit of a difficulty. I was actually wearing Minthara's Brutes of Striding which make you immune from being pulled or knocked prone only if you're concentrating on a spell. I forgot to concentrate on a spell before the fight. I should have gone in even just with um, the resistance cantrip active or, or a better uh, defensive concentration spell on. Here I um, stun him. Uh, he's not immune to prone or stun. Uh, and I'm also using my Monk Disengage to get out of there. Other options 
were a misty step scroll would have got me a little further away and can be used by anyone. I'm using the helmet that uh, counterattacks when they miss you, dealing them divine damage, but I have been watching their health and trying to make sure that they're, uh, I don't leave them on very low health so they can trigger their chain reactions on uh, their turn. These vine blight creatures create vines, uh, difficult terrain which can restrain you at the end of their turns. They can entangle you with their attacks and also when you hit them. I uh, also see here the fire elemental throws uh, a fireball that creates a fiery surface and on normal vines that burns up the vines but doesn't burn up these guys shadow cursed vines. Again the fire alley is just acting as a distraction. He's uh, keeping those other two guys from chasing me a little bit. Otherwise I would just be running more. You can see the needles chain reaction here. It's just three of them. It's a little more effective if you have all six of them together. Or stack them near the harpers as well. Again, I'm running away to keep my distance. Probably should have uh, made myself immune to this adhesive whip, but luckily saved that time. Here he is dropping his plant growth again. Fire Elemental ends up dying here. He's helped me out a lot doing some testing and uh, make me feel a lot safer on the fight. After the pull attack's been used on me twice, I remember to reapply uh, some kind of concentration spell. So put resistance on my character here. Here the Shambling Mound uses the Digestive Sap ability. You can see it uh, does nothing if you save against it. Uh, if you fail the save, it will apply a Acid debuff on you to say he's ready to eat you. Uh, if you have the Digestive Sap debuff and are restrained, the Shambling Man will use Devour on you for 10d10 damage, uh, which is often death because you're immobilized and taking acid damage as well. He is able to be knocked prone, and that's effective for being able to do some melee damage and then get away from him. Without a reliable source of prone, I'm not sure you'd want to hang out in close range with him. Here the Shambling Mound uh, gets up from his prone status and ends its turn, uh, which is typical of creatures with low movement speed. They often get up and can't do anything else. Uh, it seems odd to me that he wasn't able to use his whip on me, uh, the ranged attack. I didn't feel like I was out of range or line of sight, um, but I'm happy with that. It might also be because I'm now immune to the pull effect. Uh, but I would have expected him to still give it a go. I go back in to finish him, and you can see that Aura goes away when he dies, which is nice. Overall thoughts on the new fight? Uh, it doesn't feel like it's changed that much. It's slightly more dangerous than it was before, but uh, I think it's only going to kill people if you walk up those stairs unprepared and get surprised by them. You're going to have a really bad time. A lot of the strategies I would have used before I feel are the same, which is uh, kiting, running down that hill and round the tree uh, if needed to get a lot of distance and line of sight blocking. The new legendary ability and a lot of the difficulty in this fight only comes into play when you're restrained, so the priority is become immune to that. Ways to do this are the Ring of Free Action from Araj in Moonrise Towers, the potion vendor, the Freedom of Movement level 4 spell, and the Elixir of Guileful Movement. These all give you immunity to restrained. In a party, I think you want the character you're sending out first immune to restrained, and anyone else probably sitting at max range hitting the nearest targets. Uh, as solo, I think you want to be immune for sure before attempting this fight. It's easy to bump into it earlier, but I'd wait till either visiting Araj in Moonrise Towers and getting that ring of free action. If you get in there and melee 
I think you need a bit more preparation. You still want to be immune to restrained, but also consider your escape route. If you get pulled in and surrounded or hit with digestive sap, you probably want to teleport out with a misty step scroll. Other options might be invisibility or sanctuary or disengage and jumping. You may want to pre-buff with enhanced jump 